Page four, install extrusion kit, Z axis passive block. In this step, we're going to take the X axis profile that we began to assemble in the previous step and we're going to finish assembling it. Before we do that, we're going to adjust the passive block right here. This is that small metal piece that's by itself in your box. It has three wheels on it. Uh, this is the time to adjust it once it's fully assembled. It's just much harder, so we can adjust it before we even begin to put it on. We lay it on top of the Z-axis profile, and right there that I'm pointing to is the eccentric nut. This process is the same as with all eccentric nuts. We want there to be no wiggle in it, and we want to be able to spin this with a minimal amount of, a minimal amount of pressure. So right here, I can free spin this thing with both fingers, with one finger. It's just way too loose. And when I wiggle it along the Z-axis profile, you can see it had a lot of movement. So we take one of the provided wrenches, and we begin adjusting the nut. Now, if we turn the wrench one way, it's going to bring the wheel closer to the rail. And if we turn it the other way, it brings it further away. That's the way we tighten and loosen the eccentric nuts. So we want to get this one much tighter because you can see... Finally, I got it to where there's really no play in it, which is really good, but now we want it to not free spin with our fingers. I'm spinning it here right now. It looks like it's way too easy to spin. It's not binding, obviously, but that should be a little harder to turn. We don't want this. We want to just be able to grab the wheel at a grab the rail at a good rate. So when it does climb up that axis, it's not gonna fall down. So there we go. See, now I'm using a decent amount of pressure. I can spin it, but it's not free spinning with a single finger. There's no wobble in it. It looks like this is pretty well adjusted. So we can move on to adding it to the assembly. Here is the X axis assembly that we began in the last uh, portion. We're going to complete it right now. We're going to use that passive block that we just adjusted as well as the hot end right here. So we want to make sure the hot end goes on first. Once we get that passive block put on there, we're not going to be able to actually install the hot end so the hot end goes on just like that the two wheels go on top of the profile the bottom wheel goes the single wheel rather is on the bottom and that single wheel is the eccentric nut so we want to do the exact process we just did for the passive lock put it on adjust it no wiggle and then slowly make your adjustments that's something you can do while the printer is assembled as well you can probably do that a few times during the lifetime of the printer but doing it right now obviously extremely helpful so when we get those first prints rolling we don't have to muck around with everything. So after we adjust that, we're going to put the synchronous belt on. This belt should be rib side down. You want to lay it within the channel of the profile and wrap it around that gear that is exposed. And then once that belt is within the profile, you can slide the hot end on over it. So those two wheels that are on top of the profile are going to go over the belt that's riding in the channel. Now, one thing to note, the end of that aluminum extrusion is very sharp, so just watch out. You don't want to nick that belt when you're moving these things around. Here we have the passive block that we adjusted. The cool thing about this X-axis profile, it's identical on either side. So... There's a recessed hole as well as two screw holes. And no matter which way you decided to mount your XE axis extruder um, kit in the last step, this other side is a mirror of it. So you can, you're going to do the same thing on this side. So the recessed hole goes over the screw that's already in the passive block. And then we screw in the extra screw to get it held onto the X axis kit. And the next step. Page five, install X-axis tensioner. I'm doing this all as one big step, basically, because that's really how it's supposed to be done. We're going to install the tensioner now during the whole process. So there is the tensioner. Uh, I didn't even really blink away from the camera. It's one big fluid mo uh, process. First thing we're going to do is disassemble the tensioner, unscrew that gray knob completely. Watch out, don't let it fall. Once you do, the inside is going to pop out. You're going to see it's a small little bearing with the threaded rod at the end of it to keep it somewhere next to you because we're going to be getting to it very shortly. Now you want to remember to keep that rib side down. You're going to slide it through the bearing and right to the channel below. What this tensioner is going to do, obviously by its name, is it's going to adjust the tension on this belt. So it's going to either um, pull the belt towards the tensioner or let pressure off the tensioner in order to give slack and get slack to keep your x-axis from vibrating around. So once the belt is through the bearing of the tensioner, you're going to put reassemble it. 
get that threaded rod through the back and then screw the knob on. You don't need to screw the knob on completely completely like I did here because we do have to get that synchronous belt uh, attached to the hot end in a little bit. So we're going to need a little bit of slack, but it's no big deal. We can always just uh, readjust it when necessary. So now that we have the X of the tensioner on, we can put the two final screws in the passive block. They go on either side just like that. The real issue is that they're looking directly at each other and they almost tighten into each other. So you really have to make sure you have these things snugged in. You might even, might even need a spacer to really adjust them and snug them down properly. So we're going to start with the front screw. It's going to go through the belt tensioner into the passive block. And again, all steel screws going through aluminum, so do not, do not kill them. We turn it around, we do a little adjustments, and you'll see the eye hole for the back screw. And we do the same thing we did to the back screw. I'm just readjusting the passive block, making sure it's snug. And then I'm going to snug up this last screw. Now you definitely want to go around to the front and make sure that that front screw is now tightened because like I said, these screws are basically kissing each other once they're inside the extru extrusion. So there you go. Now my belt tensioner, maybe a little more. I do some final adjustments just to make sure. There you go. It's nice and snugged up. Now what we're going to want to do is get the belt all the way around both sides of the extrusion in the channels and then attach it to the bottom of the hot end. On the bottom of the hot end, on either side, there's small slots in the metal plate and that's where you slide the belt through so there you go i'm going around that exposed gear of course rib side in so that the gear can grab onto the rib side of the belt and move it along so we slide it around the gear and now we're going to go under the hot end and in the metal plate under the hot end like i said there's a slot on either side and we just lay the belt within the slot with the metal clip out. So you want the metal clip on the bottom side of that slot. And then we do the same to the other side. As you'll see here, I tightened my belt tensioner too much. So I didn't have enough slack. So I start adjusting and retightening it, which is normal, until I finally get enough slack where I slot the belt into this side and then I can adjust it appropriately. As far as adjusting that belt tensioner goes, you want this thing not to be as tight as a drum, but not sagging either. So you want there to be a good tension on that belt without it being too tight because you'll end up going through uh, ruining belts quicker than normal. If it's too loose, your prints won't come out properly. So it's a happy medium. That's something you can play around with. You'll get more, you'll get better, I should say, at finding that tension um, the more you print. All right, now we're happy with how the belt's on. We moved it back and forth a few times. The gear is working perfectly. Everything is running smoothly. The belt is pretty adjusted. It's nice and snappy, but not too tight. It's on to put this X-axis uh, profile cover on, and right in there is the X-axis stop. That's what the hot end is going to bump into to say that it's at home. Um, now, of course, I spoke a few times about this, but Voxalab's uh, ingenuity in this regard, that it has this cover off, from the factory so now we get to put it on which made that last process of putting the belt on significantly easier when the cover is already on and you try to snake that belt through it's just a little bit of a hassle it's not a big deal but doing it this way is much much better and now all we have to do is use two uh two screws and we place it in and we are done page six install the z-axis moving kit and adjust the tightness of the x and y axis tensioners now in order to install that z-axis moving kit we have to install what we left off in the earlier step which is the lead screw or the t-type screw now what we left off here was the z motor install without the coupler there's the coupler now we're going to install this very important part right there where i'm pointing you on the inside of that coupler is a lip kind of separates the upper half from the bottom half our lead screw is going to flush out completely on the bottom of that lip what we want to do when we put this on the motor that little axle sticking up should not go past that lip so this needs to be tight, very tight, but that axle sticking out of the motor should not go past the center line of that coupler, which is above the lip. 
if it does, what will happen is when we drop the lead screw down and flush it down, it won't flush to the bottom of the middle section of the coupler. It will flush itself to that axle on the motor and you'll get vibrations as the print progresses. So this way, we don't have the lead screw touching that motor at all. So they're both independently inside that coupler. So I put the coupler on top of the motor. I made sure that the axle sticking up was under the middle lip. I tightened it up very nice and snug. And now it's time for me to put the lead screw in. I place it in. I unscrew the top part of the coupler in order for this screw to bottom out completely. And it does to that middle lip. And then I tighten it back up. Now these are screwing into themselves. The coupler is screwing into itself. So you can tighten these up pretty good. Uh, I'll, again, no need to muscle and bind it down, but you want it nice and tight. You don't want this going anywhere. Now, as you remember, we left that Z motor loose before, and this is why. Look at the Z rod. Very, very off kilter, which is fine. We knew that. But if you were to install the Z motor like they said in the book and you tighten it down all the way, you could have a Z rod that looks slightly like that. Probably not as uh, bad, but it would be off either way. And as your prints progress, you're going to get binding in that Z axis, if you're lucky. You might not get binding at all. You might get a very small amount of binding, which will create bad prints, and you won't even know what's coming from. So right now, we're going to uh, solve a very important issue, which is making sure the Z rod or the, the lead screw is straight. So now that we straightened it up by moving it, now we can go ahead and tighten, finish tightening, I should say, that Z motor. Now what you might want to do is move that print bed a little uh, forward like we did in the first step in order to get down there a little bit better. You'll see I'll do that in a second. But now that I know that the lead screw is lined up straight, I can go ahead and I can tighten this thing down completely. Again, steel screws into an aluminum frame. Don't tighten it too much, but we don't want this. Once we're done tightening, we don't want this thing moving again. And there you have it. Look how straight that is. That's exactly how you want this to look when you're finished. Now that we have the lead screw in properly, it's time to mount the XE axis kit. So the first thing we want to do is right on the top of the extruder where that lead screw is going to go into, there are two small screws there. We want to loosen those up. We don't want those tight. We actually want it to shift left, uh, front and back a uh, slight amount. So they're probably pretty tight from the factory. Go ahead and loosen them up. Maybe one or two turns. You don't want it sloppy on there so it's flopping around completely, but you want it to have some movement. So again, make sure when you put this on, I'm standing behind the printer obviously for demonstration purposes, you want to make sure that it's going on properly and that that wiring coming from the back of the printer is <clears throat> properly on the right side. So we're going to slowly put each side on the proper axis. We're going to feed the lead screw in through that uh, threaded piece that we just adjusted. And now I'm using the bottom of the Z-axis motor, the coupler actually, to unscrew and slowly lower my X-axis. Now you can use your fingers like this. I don't really recommend it, but I can tell right here that it's flowing up and down very smoothly like i shouldn't have to use a lot of pressure to get it up which i'm not the lead screw is doing its job everything looks really really good 